Uh, so next we're going to talk about the point estimator. Uh, the point estimator is a tool that we put together to help you take good data. If you don't take good data, your map is not going to stitch well or it's going to have funky edges and it's not going to be something you're going to want to share or, or use professionally. Um, you know, so part of flying and getting good data is flying in kind of a programmable, um, predictable manner with you know, controlled elevation and controlled uh, distance between between passes. And, um, you know, this is a way to help you kind of visualize uh, what all that means. So uh, up here it says zoom in to the area you want to cover and right click on the map to define the area. So we're in San Diego, so let's go in and uh, look at San Diego here. Um, this is not an area that you would want to map. It's just an area that kind of gives you an idea of, um, you know, how, how big a, uh, you know, in city blocks generally that we're talking about. Um, you know, so, but first, well, you know, we can right click as it says to do here. So let's go ahead and right click um, and talk about what this is quickly. So the, this red area is something you can control the size of. That's just saying, okay, I want to do a map that's this, example is 500 meters by 500 meters um, and then um, the numbers are kind of down down below here and we'll, we'll go change some numbers real quick and then come back um, so if you I'll leave this up so if you want to select a camera and you do the hero uh, GoPro hero 3 silver with the 5.5 millimeter lens which is something we recommend um, because GoPros if you're gonna do it with a GoPro it should have the modified lens um, Otherwise, it, it's too wide and you get kind of weird results. You can still do it and it still works. It's just not professional. So if you're doing it just messing around, have at it. Um, but if you're trying to do something and make measurements or, or, or things like that, you really want to have this uh, you know, flattened, corrected image. So we're going to select that. Um, what that did, um, you'll see it, you see up here all of a sudden there's more yellow dots. Uh, that's because... Um, the field of view of the camera got narrower. And I'm gesturing with my hands because that's what I do and you can't see that. So maybe we'll do another one with my hand gestures. But um, on, upon selecting the camera, um, you know, it sets the focal length. And the focal length uh, for people that are, are familiar with uh, camera work is basically a ratio of, uh, let's see, how do I do this? Uh, a ratio of the distance between the, the lenses and the sensor and the lens and the uh, subject or what you're imaging. Um, so a long focal length gives you a small field of view or smaller field of view kind of tightens it up. Um, so the stock GoPro camera is 2.77 millimeters. So by going up to 5.5, you can see up here, it tightens it up quite a bit. Um, pixel pitch, you don't really need to know too much about that, but that turns into what's called ground sampling distance. Um, I'll show you that up above. Um, if you don't, if your camera doesn't show up in this pick list here, you can hit other and you can just type in numbers uh, that match whatever your camera system is. It's pretty easy to find the pixel pitch or pixel size. Uh, this is in microns. Um, so again, back to our, our GoPro, um, 1.4 microns for a pixel is a fairly small pixel. Let's go with, uh, while we're down here, a thousand meter width and a thousand meter length. Um, let's make it 45 degrees just because. Um, we're gonna leave the overlap alone um, because 55 is a good number. And we'll, we'll talk about what we can do to that. Um, mm -hmm. We're also flying at 100 meters AGL, which is, a, AGL is above ground level. Um, that's pretty high. Um, with the, with the narrow field of view lens on the GoPro, you can fly at 100 meters. Uh, you cannot fly at 100 meters with a standard GoPro lens. Um, it's just too wide and it gets funky. Um, this is for planning how much time it's gonna take uh, to do the flight. Um, 12 meters per second is kind of the peak speed you can hit with a, with a DJI Phantom, uh, which is what we fly with a lot. Um, you know, if you have an airplane, it's going to be a whole lot more than that. Or, my, you know, an RC plane, it's going to be a whole lot higher than that. And if you're in a real airplane, it's going to be like 50 meters per second. So, um, 
you know, you can, you can mess around with that. And turnaround time is how long it takes the aircraft to get from one pass to another. Um, and that just gets added up um, into the time total. So let's go back up to the top here and, oh, wow, look, look what happened. So um, we're going to zoom back out. Um, this is maybe not the uh, best thing to show, but as you can see, uh, the image count went up to 713 images. So to do a thousand meter by thousand meter area, which is a, a square kilometer, um, it takes 713 images, 23 passes. That's each one of these rows of yellow dots. Each yellow dot is a location where an image should be taken. Um, and then if you take the speed and the turnaround time into account, it'll take 33 minutes. This does not include ascent and descent time, which are not insignificant. Um, this is beyond the amount that a uh, DJI Phantom or most quadrocopters can fly. Um, I don't know that there's any that'll do that with a, a moving quickly. Um, but kind of what's interesting here is that it calculates, uh, you know, one inch per pixel. So that means that, that that's your ground sampling distance that I talked about before. And that means that you can resolve things that are one inch in size. And, you know, so if you're trying to look for a, let's say a, I don't know, a car, um, you know, a car is 150 inches long or something like that and 70 or so wide. Um, so you can get some pretty good detail um, on a car. These are cars on the road kind of behind this here. And you can see these maybe have like one foot GSD or like two foot GSD. It's not very good. Um, you know, so if we zoom back out, um, you know, this whole image here. So this is where one image gets taken. This is where we start talking about overlap. So this outline here is where one image is taken. Here's the center point. That's where the, the drone should be when that image gets taken. The next one is where this image should be taken and it has a 50% overlap along track. So this image was this big square here and this image is this one here. So it has 55% overlap between the image taken here and the image taken here. And the same is true for coming back on the next pass. So this is cross track overlap and that's also set to 55%. Um, you can see this dotted line here. That's kind of the flight path. That's the ideal flight path uh, that the, the aircraft should take um, in, in getting this well-planned overlapping, you know, sufficient overlap data. Um, but, you know, one, one inch per pixel you know, if you look at the spot width, which you know, you can see down here, um, the spot width is 94 meters-ish. So from here to here is 94 meters. And if we go down here and look at the resolution, um, that was a X resolution of 3680. So that means that for ni over 94 meters, you get 3,680 3, pixels to, to take you know, that image, and then 2,000 something going this way. So all of your, whatever that comes out to, seven megapixels get spread out over this 90 meter by 70 meter, 94 meter by 74 meter um, spot. And that's how we calculate the, uh, the one inch per pixel. And that's your ground sampling distance. And that, think of that as just your, your detail level. So just to show you what's possible here, remember I said that 100 is pretty high. Um, you know, not so much if you're looking for one inch GSD, but if you come down here and you change the altitude to 60 and you come back up, it kind of recalculated things. And now the spot width is 56 meters by 42 meters and your GSD is 0.6 image, inches per pixel. So now instead of one inch per pixel, you can resolve things that are basically half the size and you get more pixels on target. So that car before that we got 150 you know, pixels along its length and 70 across its width, we're now getting 300 by 140. Um, so a lot more data, a lot more, um, a lot more data samples, um, pixels on target is basically the, the name of the game um, you know, as far as calculating this. But what we didn't talk about here was, was points. So now you're talking about doing a square kilometer at 0.6 inches per pixel, which 
is kind of ridiculous. That's 20, 20 gigapixels. Can we do it? Yeah, we can do it. Uh, can you take that data in one shot? Probably not. 50, 58 minutes. I don't think there's a whole lot other than ga you know, gas-powered airplanes and helicopters and things like that that can take that much data in, in one run. You know, this is, this is four, maybe five flights um, with a Phantom, probably four. Um, this is two flights maybe with a, with a big plane or with a, you know, a, a larger um, RC plane or, or something like that. Um, but that's not going to be one shot. So, um, you know, we can go back to, oh, so the number of passes went up to 39. So, you know, if we look at this, this is ridiculous. You know, that's, that's a lot of points. So, um, you know, while that's kind of not reasonable, let's come back down here and put this back up to 100 meters. Um, and you can mess with the speed to make it go faster, but if the max speed of your aircraft is 12 meters per second, don't put in 25 meters per second in there just to make the time go down, because if you do that, you're going to run out of battery, you're not going to be able to finish it, and it's just not going to work. So, uh, you know, 713, can you do that? Not in one battery. This is probably a two-battery mission, but... It, it's good to know that you can get one inch GSD in probably two batteries, uh, two batteries worth of flying um, on, a, on you know one of our mapping kits of the DJI Phantom II. Um, the the other thing this is this is an important thing to talk about um, in the point estimator is how many seconds per image. So this is assuming lay, laying it out this way assumes that you can let me get this out of the way. Um, doing it this way assumes that you can um, tell your camera to take, t tell it when to take a picture. So if you can set it to two point, take a picture every 2.5 seconds, you know, you want to set your camera, the tool tip over here says you want to set your camera to take pictures at least that fast. So if you can set it to take it at 2.5, you're good. You're going to take slightly more than 713 images, but you're going to get slightly higher um, overlap along track and that's that, that's that's good if you can't if you don't have that kind of granularity in setting how fast your camera takes pictures um, you can do a couple things you can fudge the you know the overlap a little bit you can change the speed you can fly slower or faster you can change the altitude so that, that's why this is kind of so complicated that we have to do it in a point system and you know we can't give an answer as to how many how much how many points does it take to do an acre because it doesn't work that way um so yeah so let's try to get this number down to two because i know on a, on a gopro you can set it to take a picture every two seconds so if we want to take pictures slower that means that we either want to fly slower or uh, fly higher I don't know so let's let's go down it's always kind of like a weird thing so let's knock this down to 10 meters per second and so it went to three seconds so I guess we needed to speed it up to get it to two seconds but a lot of times you can't speed it up you can't fly 15 meters per second you know so we'll come back up here and it's roughly two two images per second um, but we can't fly at 15 meters per second. So that's not gonna work. So that's not an option. So we come back up here, it's back to 2.63. The other thing is, you can set it to take one every two seconds. You're just gonna get more, more overlap. So we can come down here and say, okay, well, let's take our cross, our forward overlap, our long track overlap, and bump that up to 65. You know, more, more data is good. So that knocked it down to two seconds per image. So if you set your GoPro to take a picture, you know, with this as, the, as your flight plan, to take a picture every two seconds, you would get roughly 65% overlap, but it's going to take you about 900 images. So, you know, this is where this tool's useful because you can kind of see how changing one number is going to affect.